Hi there and welcome, this is Jennifer. Today I wanted to show you how to use border dies to create a really quick and easy gatefold card design. This is a great way to give more life to those border dies that you may not use very often. I'm also going to share with you a fun tip to help you get more out of your ink colors for images like these where you need different colors for stamp layering. Let's go ahead and jump into creating this gatefold design. I'm using these dies from Sunny Studios. They came out with this set a while ago. These cut like a V with some faux stitching on some of them. It's a little over four and a half inches wide, or four and a quarter inches wide. So you can do this on the bottom of a card or a little tag. There are so many things you can do with this great set of dies. Now they recently have come out with another set similar, but this does two scallop edges, and then the other two just do faux stitching and faux piercing. So I'm really excited about this set, and I wanted to use that today. But keep in mind, you could use any border die, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Next, we need to get our cardstock cut and scored in the right places. I'm making smaller cards today that are about three and a half by four and a half. So to create these cards, you need to cut and score just right. And I did a lot of playing around and engineering to figure out what worked best for doing this border die gatefold design. And I thought I'd share those exact measurements with you to save you some time. So what you're going to need to do is cut a piece of cardstock to three and a half by 11. And then you're going to score in two places. Once that's four inches from one edge, and then the other is two and a half inches from the other edge. This will result in a three and a half inch wide card that is four and a half inches tall. Now you can make that middle area a little bit bigger between the two score lines, but I found that this works with almost any border die you may have. So this should save you some time if you use these exact measurements. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create that card. I am going to do a few different cards today and show you how you can kind of change things up. So here is my three and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna again do two score lines on this. Instead of using a scoreboard, I just use the little ledge in my trimmer to do my scoring. So I'm going to do the first score line four inches from one end. Then I'm going to flip my paper around and score at two and a half inches from the other end. Then I'll go ahead and crease my lines. Now you'll notice that the two flaps will overlap in the middle and that's what we need for this technique to work. And you'll see in a few moments. So once I have this, I will have a three and a half by four and a half inch note card, which fits great into a four bar size envelope, which I just love the smaller size cards. Now most four bar cards are actually five inches tall, so this is a little bit shorter, but you really want that good amount of overlap between the two flaps that you see there. So I'm going with a little bit shorter card. So let's go ahead and do that gatefold design. So you can see the overlap there. We wanna make sure our border die lays above that overlap that you see there, just in that area. So instead of a regular border die, I'm using these cool V-cut dies from Sunny Studio. I'm putting a little piece of tape to keep my card nice and flat and closed. And I'm going to position this die right on the bottom of it. And there are these little like uh, tick marks on the die to help you center it up. So it makes it very easy to center up. So I'm positioning that just right, making sure that my border die is above the area where those cardstock flaps overlap. So I'm taping that in place so it doesn't move. I'm going to run this through my die cut machine and I'm not using my metal adapter plate because I don't want too much pressure on this. Now when I take it out, what I have is that border die cut through the top layer and it usually cuts through the second layer. If not, you can run it through again to really die cut that and check it out. Those two flaps meet up perfectly and you have a great, great, uh, great fold design using a border die. Now there might be a little impression of that die on the inside of the card. It shouldn't cut through that bottom layer, but you can see there's a little impression there. If that bothers you, you can just cut a piece of cardstock slightly smaller and adhere it in the inside. And then you have a fun border die gatefold card design. Now, I wanted to show you how to do this with the traditional border die. So I have this cloud border die. And again, I just have a uh, note card that I created, like I showed you earlier. I made this one a little bit taller, but you wanna make sure that those cardstock flaps overlap in the middle and that you are putting the border die in that overlapped area. So I'm going ahead and taping down my little cloud border die, running this through, and you'll see that you can get a gateful die design with this also. I just wanted to show you, you could use pretty much any border die for this. It'd be fun to use a grass border die or a scallop, anything you want, and check that out. You get a great gatefold design. So fast and so easy and such a unique way to make a card instead of just the traditional opening card. 
Okay, so now back to that V gatefold design. I did want to put that green kind of a scalloped border to kind of reinforce that top flap just for a little bit of decoration. I wanted to show you how I created that. I took that same border die, the V with the scallop edge, and I'm cutting it from some white cardstock. Now I didn't have the perfect green to match the green stamping I planned to do. So I went ahead and took my green ink pad that I planned to use for the stamping, and I smeared it right onto the cardstock so that I knew it would be a perfect match to the stamping that I'm going to do in a few minutes. I wanted to add some more decoration to this, so I took the faux stitched V border die, lining it right up and running it through the die cut machine. This will just put faux stitching. And then finally, I'm using the straight V line to cut along the edge. You could use your scissors to cut along this if you wanted to. So I'm actually using both of the uh, V border die sets from Sunny Studio today. But again, you could do this technique with any border die that you may have. So I have this little trim to put on my card. I did this for the white card, but I skipped it on the craft color card. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some adhesive on this and glue that right to the top flap of our card. Next, I'm going to do my sentiment. Now, I usually do my sentiment last, but I wanted to do a lot of stamping around the sentiment on the small card, and I wanted to make sure I didn't run out of room for the sentiment, so I'm doing it first this time. I put a little piece of tape to kind of close my card because it kind of wants to pop up, and then I just reinforce the score lines. So I'm using this new incredible stamp set called Autumn Splendor. This is from Sunny Studios. I've got the thank you greeting from the set, and I want to heat emboss that with gold. So I'm using my anti-static powder tool to rub across there to remove static, and I'm inking up the thank you with Versamark ink, and I'm gonna stamp it along the diagonal there. Actually, I've got the stamping kind of overlapping onto the green also. And then I'm going to add Hero Arts gold embossing powder. This is a great gold powder that embosses nice and smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to do the stamping on the rest of the card. I'm using this great new stamp set from Sunny Studio called Autumn Splendor. Now, this is a stamp layering set with a completely different look. It's got like a graphic modern look to it, and I really like it. Now, it's pretty basic stamping, but I have some tricks to share with you. So I'm going to just walk through some of those. Now, the colors of ink that I'm using today are a mix of Hero Arts and Simons' Stamp and W Plus 9 inks, but you could use any inks that you may have, especially dye inks work for this. I'm also using the screen to add a little bit of um, interest to these fall colors. So I will have all these listed below if you're interested in them. So on my card design, I wa kind of wanted a cluster of leaves towards the top left corner and then kind of cascading down to the bottom right corner. So I'm actually going to just start stamping in that diagonal line. I'm starting with this adorable little acorn and I'm using the colors that I had just showed you. Now keep in mind that these type of inks uh, slowly absorb into the paper and even out and soften. So what I like to do when I am stamping with these inks and doing layering is do the bottom layer and then heat set it just to allow that ink to go to what the true color is going to end up being so I know what to add on top. So I'm just heat setting this after I do any first layer of stamping and the second layer of stamping and so on. Now it's time for the second layer of stamping and I wanted to show you a trick. You see how half of the leaves here is it, the color's a little bit different than the other half? That's because I did a second layer of stamping with this stamp set and I changed the ink slightly. Here's the trick. I'm first going to ink up the stamp with a completely different color. I used a brown ink here and I stamped it off a few times. Then I went to the rust ink and inked up my stamp and stamped it onto the first layer that's in the rust color too. By inking up the stamp first with a different color and stamping it off a few times, you're leaving a little bit of that other color of ink on your stamp. So you kind of change your color. So here I'm gonna do green. First I'm gonna ink it up with a pumpkin color, stamp it off a few times, then ink it up with that green color and stamp it on top of the first green layer image. That slightly changes the second layer color. So if you don't have a ton of colors of inks or shades of inks, you can first ink up with a different color, stamp off a little bit, ink up with the same color, and then you can get a little bit different shade. It really works well for stamp layering. I'll do another video on this in the future. So here I'm just stamping some of the details on the acorns. These acorns are absolutely adorable in this set. Um, the key to lining up the stamp layering is getting your head over the image. That's why I kind of cut out part of the video because I don't want you to look at the top of my head for all this stamping. 
Here's another tip for you. When you're creating a bunch of stamped images where you need to do masking, choose to mask the simplest shape to cut out. So I chose to mask my acorn. That acorn was the easiest mask to cut out. So now I have a mask over my acorn, stamping a complicated leaf over it. And that way I have some overlapping without a mess. And that's really helpful when you're creating like a cluster of things. So I'm choosing to create masks only for the images that are easy to cut out. And that saves me a lot of time. I I will keep that mask and use it for um, other cards in the future. Now that I have most of my leaves and such done, I wanted to add some berries, but I wasn't sure where. So I decided to stamp them separately and cut them out and add them exactly where I wanted them. That would prevent me from making any mistakes. So I did the first layer of stamping with a red ink. And I'm going to heat set that. Now for the second layer, I'm going to ink up first with brown ink, stamp off a little bit, then ink up with the red and do the second layer. And that will result in a slightly darker red color for that second layer. Okay, so after I have all these berries done, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. I use scissors to cut them out, but if you have a hole punch, I bet that would work great for pumpi popping these out very quickly. I'm moving soon, so I have my packed up somewhere, so I'm not sure where they are. So I just cut them out by hand, and I'm going to glue these onto the card. If, so this doesn't make it truly a one layer card, but I found this was the best way to find exactly where to put these on the card. Here's another tip for you. I wanted to have some little details kind of splattered on here, make it look like there were little just gold speckles everywhere. To do a controlled kind of speckle, I'm just adding little dots here and there with a quickie glue pen. And then I will shake on some gold embossing powder and heat set that. So you can actually heat set anything that you draw with a quickie glue pen. It takes a little bit of extra heat to dry the glue and emboss the powder, but it works really well. And now I have these little details that perfectly match our heat embossed sentiment. Okay, so since I'm addicted to adding shimmer to all of my cards, I am tracing over all of the stamped images with my clear Wink of Stella shimmer pen so they all have a little extra sparkle. And I felt like those berries kind of blended in a little too much to the leaves. So to make those berries stand out even more, I put a clear coat of uh, glossy accents on top of the berries. I find that having this fine tip nozzle on the glossy accents bottle helps me in putting this right in the exact spot. And that's right on top of all of these berries. So there we have our finished white gatefold card. I wanted to talk about the craft gatefold card and my matching envelope. Here's the craft card. I kept it very simple, did the stamping in the same positions. I white heat embossed my sentiment and I used a white gel pen for the accents instead of doing the gold embossing. I used the same colors of ink on the craft and I like how you get a more toned down look. Okay, now I wanted to encourage you to create a matching envelope. Every time you create a card, it really makes a big difference when we're mailing these. So I have some envelopes from Gina Kay here. I love her envelopes. And I'm just going to white heat emboss a sentiment along the back flap. We have all of this supplies out. We might as well do this. This stamp set is from Sunny Studios. It has some great things to stamp on envelopes and also has images that you can build together to create fun little characters. It's great for card makers. So I have white heat emboss that I love the white on the color. Then I'm going to do just some basic tone on tone stamping around it using the same stamp set. I really think stamping a matching envelope is a great way to make your handmade card stand out when you get it in the mail. I also stamped on the front of the envelope next to where you can add the address, and there you have an envelope that perfectly matches. I think it makes a big difference with a handmade card. Okay, so I hope you like this gatefold design idea. Using border dies it really works well. I encourage you to try it. If you are interested in all of these supplies, I have them linked below in my YouTube description, but I also encourage you to go to my blog up there on the top left. I have a lot more information there, including a giveaway and blog hop. Now in the middle are two more videos that I think you might find helpful or interesting, so be sure to check those out. I appreciate you coming by and watching this video, and I hope you'll return again soon. Have a great day.